afternoon to our small but very dedicated audience this afternoon. It's really nice to welcome you to our Teamlit Wednesday uh, webinar session. So this is the fourth in the Teamlit sessions that we have been running since last September. So you're very welcome. Um, my name is Sally Reynolds and while people are joining, let me ask you just a couple of practical things. First of all, to tell you that we are recording the session this afternoon. Uh, we would also like to invite you if you could change your name and add the name of your association or the country that you're coming from. We'd love to know where you're joining us from. Feel free uh, you, to use the chat function to raise questions, share ideas during the session this afternoon. It will run for an hour and 15 minutes and we've got several different speakers with plenty of time for conversation as well, we hope. So please feel free to put on your camera, keep your microphone off unless you're speaking. And let me just very briefly introduce you to this, the agenda for this afternoon. So after a short introduction by me, we're going to hear about the findings of our second phase of initial investigations into the status of teacher training with regard to media literacy in Europe. And that's going to be presented by our colleagues, Lina and Lucia. We're then going to switch pace a little bit to have a follow-up focus on Spain with Vivian from Maldita, followed by a focus on France with Isabel from AFP. And finally, Patrick is going to give us a short overview of what's happening with teacher training in Poland and the status of media literacy there. Then we'll have a chance, we hope, for a discussion, final words and a wrap-up. So that's the planning for the session this afternoon. Um, just to remind you, maybe in the next slide, about, media, about Teamlit. And this is a project which is funded by EMIF, the European Media Information Fund. And our aim, as you can see, is to establish a value-added and sustainable network, providing guidance, resources and support for European teacher educators and trainers in media and information literacy. So you can see on the screen the partners that are involved in the project. We're running into our final six months of the project. It will finish in June. And today we're going to focus very much on work package, what we call work package two, which is the work that's being carried out on research, review and analysis. So um, without too much further ado, I think we can probably go to Lucia and to Lina. Welcome everybody who's joined in the meantime, just to remind you if you could adjust your name to tell us the name of the organization and or the country that you're joining us from this afternoon, that would be really nice. And also please feel free to use the chat during the session as well, if you'd like to share ideas or ask any questions. So I think Lucia and Lina, over to you. Okay, can you see that though? Yep, okay. yes, see that fine, thanks Lucia. Okay. So thank you so much, you guys, for being here with us today. And we are very grateful for our invited guests. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and so we are talking about uh, this report that we've been doing, actually, because it's a long process and it's, it's not finished yet. But this is the second um, delivery of this working package. We are going to cover these topics today, these countries, and um, you know that this is a part of the team lead project that is um, uh, investigating, but also offering uh, support for teacher education and training in media information literacy across Europe. So um, this is the team when we are speaking about the working package too. And I'm so happy to be here with Lina that will be presenting today, but we also have the support of Shane and Jennifer and Ricardo Castellini that is not here in the presentation, but was there as well with us during this process. Um, so this is the concept that we are working with when we're talking about media information literacy. We try to be as comprehensive as possible, and we based uh, our research in this uh, concept. Uh, just a quick, uh, short overview, what is this report about? So we are talking about mapping, we are trying to understand the state of media information literacy, education and training for teachers, but we also trying to understand what is the offers there. Uh, so we try to map those um, those uh, initiatives and offers. 
And in this uh, particular report, we are covering in Spain, Catalonia, France, uh, Poland, Croatia, Bulgaria, um, Luxembourg, and Belgian Wallonia. So uh, just a short view on the methodology here. We, we are talking about desk research, analyzing academic papers. Sure, and though there is no much information in, academ in academia about it, but we also resorted to uh, policies, regulations in institution websites like ministries of education uh, in those countries, as well as uh, syllabi of models and um, uh, for pre-service teachers, or it means future teachers, so at the universities, but also in in-service teachers, for in-service teachers. We also completed that with um, uh, four, 19 interviews uh, specifically for this uh, report. So going directly to, <laughs> to the countries, I'm gonna try to be as fast as possible. So Croatia has a very uh, interesting, a very interesting history on media information literacy, mostly focused on film literacy. And it's a quite common around this region that you have this kind of education since early ages in, um, in the schools. And it's, uh, this is a very, was a very nice uh, finding. And we see that uh, although there is no um, media information literacy, in the curricula, in the official curricula of uh, schools, there are efforts uh, from the governments and the other institutions, especially NGOs, uh, that are really promoting media information literacy. Interestingly, as well, there is an event, an annual event that involves uh, the populations. So the population of the country with different audiences. So it's very interesting that the the, the the education and the training and talking about media information literacy in Croatia is getting momentum. Uh, about the, the, the education system in Croatia, as I said, there is no specific um, uh, media information literacy in the curriculum, though there are some elements in Croatian language and also in extracurricular activities, uh, such as informatics. Um, it's interesting as well to point it out the role of um, librarians and also uh, headmasters when it comes to these types of trainings and information to students. In terms of teacher training, uh, there is a very uh, small amount of uh, media training, media information literacy education for pre-service teachers. And uh, although there is uh, some very interesting models on media culture, which is uh, sometimes, um, most of the times actually, very based on film literacy and digital competencies rather than uh, critical literacy and uh, other types of uh, literacy, uh, also embedded in media information literacy. So in-service teachers are well better served in that sense because they have much more to much more resources to to uh, offer it to them, but still there is a lack of coordination and there is still a lot of um, government uh, initiatives that needed to to be more coordinated. So in terms of Spain, uh, we see that Spain uh, has offers a very complex. Um, landscape ecosystem for media information literacy, uh, especially due to its um, very multicultural, multilinguistic um, environment uh, and, and context. So that offers uh, some challenge in terms of media information literacy, education and training, though there is exactly, um, just let me move this a little bit further, okay. So there is um, uh, information about media information literacy in the organic law of education and also in the audiovisual communication law uh, from 2022. And, but still um, some regions, especially the autonomous regions as the, some liberty or some freedom in terms of application of this um, or kind of adaptation in their regions. So this offers also um, as another, another layer of complexity to the case. 
Um, but again, we have uh, some uh, in the law, some information about the critical thinking, but still the digital competencies are very strongly uh, focused. Um, in terms of teacher training, we see the emerging um, players there as uh, the fact checkers. Thank you again, <laughs> Maudita, for being here, Vivian. And uh, she can talk a little bit more about this situation, what I think is uh, very interesting. We saw that in other countries as well. But we also see in uh, Spain uh, a lot of different players, stakeholders. We see the participation of the public service broadcaster, what is, was a very interesting and very, uh, I was very glad to see that participation. They have uh, specific uh, chairs in, in each regions based on universities that helps to spread the information to help to, to evolve on the research on these topics as well. So moving on to um, Catalonia, we are talking about a very dense and very rich region of the country, dense populated, I mean, and um, so it's a very interesting, very rich history as well. And um, that also offers uh, interesting uh, aspects for us, for, for, for our analysis. So in terms of um, the education, as I said, the Spanish... Sorry? Uh, okay, no, it's not with us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the Catalonian um, uh, government has a, a priority in media information literacy, as we found when we see as, as well the great participation of the Catalan Audiovisual uh, Council, what it was a great, great uh, uh, finding that I think was uh, very interesting. And they have a, a very strong participation with uh, uh, the partnerships with organizations on the ground, as, again, with fact checkers. And that's uh, really boosted the media literacy efforts in the region. In terms of the teacher training, we do see some offers in terms of a pre-service and must, uh, mostly uh, focused on master degree levels, but again, focus more on understanding the part of the technological part, uh, the digital part, instead of more critical thinking. Um, although there is some specific, um, uh, there is a specific framework for as a reference, that is used there, but again, digital competence before critical thinking and other aspects of media information literacy. Um, again, we are talking about uh, participation of other organizations in service teaching organizations uh, in teaching and in, in training. But again, uh, we had we see a lack of coordination, and that's that's quite spread around the around Europe. Um, about Poland, can I say that it's more complex a country in, in this series? Um, so Poland passes through a very interesting uh, history, uh, understanding this history and the political shifts is a very, uh, it's a very difficult uh, process. And we see that uh, there's different uh, situations in political and the political landscape and the political system in Poland has influenced the directly the offers and the capacity of the country to deal with the situation of media information literacy. So we see that there is no uh, media information literacy offers uh, in primary and secondary schools. And we can't see that, uh, we see that there is some individual uh, teachers and um, uh, headmasters or uh, other uh, staff members in schools that are interested in those topics, and so they resort to other organizations. Though there is a, there was a recent another a, a recent shift in government again, so we hope for uh, some new developments and hopefully better uh, developments as well. So in terms of media education, as we were saying, there is no uh, specific topics in the curriculum, official uh, curriculum, as far as we could see. And it depends on the individual uh, interests, NGOs, and uh, some other uh, non-profits. And some parts of um, some organizations do have uh, been advocating for media information literacy. 
and they provided uh, and they also provide some um, training and education, which is uh, this this um, document that's packed for uh, education that was a document um, made by these organizations that are trying to address many issues in the educational system, among them uh, the promotion of media information literacy. So again, among those organizations that are being crucial in this um, turning point that we are seeing in, in Poland now, it's uh, the fact-checking organizations. And then again, we have Demagog and Patrick here for us to um, talk a little bit longer, a little bit further about the Polish situation. And thank you again all for the opportunity. I will uh, lend, <laughs> I'll give the, the words to Lina now. Thank you so much. I will just sneak in before Lina for a moment to present the information on Luxembourg. Um, so Luxembourg is a smite, a quite small country with about 660,000 inhabitants. Um, however, there has been a very strong population growth mainly due to immigration. So Luxembourg today is very multicultural and multilingual. It also has three administrative languages, namely Luxembourgian, French, and German. Concerning the education system, at a national... Oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, at a national level, the Ministry of Education, Childhood, and Youth with agencies under its patronage is um, responsible for or oversees media literacy. So concerning MIL in formal and non-formal education, the government plays an important role. Uh, Non-government players are involved as well, though. Um, I'd like to point out the Media Compass, which is a general framework on media education and a guide for teachers, as well as the recent introduction of two new school subjects concerning MIL in Luxembourg. Now on to MIL in teacher training. Um, Luxembourg has only one university, the University of Luxembourg, which was founded in 2003. And the pathways to become an elementary or a secondary school teacher differ. But in every study program for prospective teachers, at least one course which seems to concern or specifically concerns MIL is offered, but it's not that many. Um, it has been quite common for Luxembourgian students to um, obtain the degree abroad, also for students of teaching. And this, however, can pose some challenges because the prospective teachers coming back to Luxembourg can have different levels and kinds of knowledge, including on MIL. Teachers in service have the right and obligation to continuing training and multiple continuing training opportunities concerning MIL related topics are offered for example, by the Training Institute of National Education, the IFEN, which seems to be an important player in this field. Further, elementary education teachers have the possibility to specialize in different fields. And one of them is digital literacy. So as a specialized teacher for digital literacy, they offer guidance and support concerning media-based education and educate students in computational thinking and coding which is one of the recently introduced subjects. So yeah, now on to Lina. Thank you very much. I am very pleased to take over from my dear colleagues and present you the following countries on Bulgaria, France, and Belgium, Belgium. So let us start with Bulgaria, which has the population of more than 6 million people. The country faces educational disparities between the more economically stronger urban sites and less populated rural sites. School education is mandatory until the age of 16, and the Ministry of Education and Science is responsible for it. The next slide focuses on nil in education. From 2020, um, civic education was introduced as a subject in the grades 11 and 12, where students cover media literacy as part of their education in social and civil competences field, with disinformation taking the priority. The non-governmental sector in Bulgaria is particularly active in various mill activities, organizing humorous materials, trainings, and events on media literacy throughout the country. Not all of the offered materials are free. Media literacy falls into the extracurricular activities in some schools too, which may include journalistic and photography clubs, 
schools radio, or the production of videos. The next slide will introduce us to Mill in teacher education. So from 2017, Mill education was introduced in journalism studies in several universities, but not in teacher education. There are about eight universities that qualify uh, teachers to be. At the Sophia University, for example, media pedagogy has been part of the pre-service teacher training for more than a decade, especially focusing on the use of digital tools for pedagogical purposes. The continuous professional development of teachers is mandatory, is paid by the teachers themselves and evolves through the five level scale. Each level also brings financial raise to teachers' salaries. Teachers in Bulgaria reported high peer-to-peer -peer support in upgrading their skills and implementing new ideas. This is indeed part um, that matches well with the strategy of teacher educators in MIL uh, who aim to create, as they call, domino effect with a coaching attempt. The more than a half of in-service teachers in Bulgaria are aged 50 years and above uh, with not enough future teachers studying at Bulgarian universities. The government aims to stop this premature leaving of qualified teachers and make the profession a little bit more prestigious by increasing their salaries. With the next slide, I will move to France. As a democratic republic, France consists of 18 administrative regions, five of which are overseas departments. The population is over 68 million with over 15 million pupils and students and over 688,000 teachers in public schools. The educa French education system is centralized and regulated by the Department of National Education, Higher Education and Research. With a state defining curricula at an educational level, recruiting teachers and providing them with in-service training. Public education is secular and free and is compulsory, compulsory until the six years old. With the next slide on mill in education, one can generally claim that despite the long historical tradition, France continues to increase the importance of mill through numerous programs and initiatives at governmental and non-governmental levels. From 1983, the Center for Media and Information Literacy, CLEMI, has been tasked by the ministry with implementing training actions. There are several major events, however, that have and continue to shape French approach. So for one, the national education reform of 2013, which sees MIL as a necessity for responsible and critical citizenship. For second, the terrorist attack of Charlie Hebdo in 2015, after which new actors in the media field strengthened their activities, for example, France TV or CSA, etc. And the third one could be mentioned as the killing of the history and civics teacher Samuel Paty in 2020, which was another shock to the mill education field and strengthened French perception of it as an essential part of education for a democratic life. As Frau Meitz argues, teachers all over France started doubting their pedagogical independence while dealing with hot topics, pointing to the gaps between top-down decisions and their realization on the ground with the resources at hand. A stronger need for adaptive strategies within mill were requested. The Ministry of Education emphasizes media and information literacy, short for IMI, as a compulsory cross-cutting subject. In the next slide is on mill in teacher training. So public sector teachers in France are state civil servants and undergo competitive examination at several stages. There are 32 national higher education institutions where future teachers study and collect experience. More specific information was found about the significance of in-service training in mill which might indicate the stronger position that it has in the continuous professional development schemes rather than in pre-service education. Continuous education is compulsory for all teachers. The training takes place outside the teaching obligations and the costs are covered by teachers' personal training account. Entre le Ligne should be mentioned as the significant media and information association in this field, and you will hear more about it 
from Isabel later. And teacher librarians within the French uh, context need a special attention because apart from being a contact person in with for all new issues from within and outside school walls, they also engage in various actions that surpass the press and media week. With the next slide, I would like to move to Belgium, Wallonie. With over 11 million inhabitants, Belgium is a federal constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary system where the decision-making powers are not centralized, but divided between federal governments, three language-based communities, Flemish, French, and German-speaking, and three regions, Flanders, Brussels, capital, and Wallonia. Roughly 3.6 million inhabitants live in the Wallonia Federation, the southern part of country. Language communities in Belgium are responsible for education, and it is compulsory until 18 years old. With the next slide on million education, I'd like to say that in the face of disinformation, Wallonia Federation considered mill as an enabling and emancipating tool for young people to become engaged citizens. In 2022, the government launched a media literacy plan to develop critical thinking to be implemented progressively in a cross-cutting manner across various sectors. According to one interviewee, MIL in Wallonia is multidimensional despite decades of efforts to increase the significance of it through various programs. There is a board of media literacy established by the parliamentarian decree, which is in charge of coordinating all parties involved in putting MIL into the curriculum. The emphasis is put on the longevity of such framework which should ideally go beyond the cycles of ministers as well as various changes in media landscape. Next slide on mill and teacher training. Our collected qualitative data indicates that multi many multidimensional circumstances have to be successfully brought together in order to achieve successful mill. Initial training, financial capabilities, school management support, technical equipment, and so on. In Wallonia, teachers receive basic mill training during their initial educations, but have free space to deliver the topic how they see relevant. In such a situation, as one of our interviewees said, some teachers advance and others not. For one, three years of training is too short to equip them with the ready to use classroom scenarios. With regards to in-service teachers, all of them are required to attend continuous professional training. Several educational institutions are introducing the certificate proposals with a specialization degree. And now let's move to conclusions. So as we saw in the second report, the driving force for mill in many of the current contexts is spread is the spread of disinformation and fake news. Mill is furthermore approached as a cross-cutting competence to be acquired throughout the curriculum of all subjects and throughout all phases of education. Mill also seems to be navigating the slim line between the integration of technology into pedagogical practices and the significance of critical thinking in the analysis and production of media. We also found that pre-service and in-service teacher training is diverse, complex, in many cases, and very context specific. The role of journalists, fact-checking organizations, and NGOs in our research countries were very prominent in balancing this often vague state guidelines on mill. And partly in relation to disinformation, we found a close link between mill education, citizenship, and democracy. With the next slide, we can confirm that some main points from our previous report were um, only strengthened. So mainly, Good practices involve the combination of governmental, institutional, and local approaches. And the challenges to, in, to implement MIL were the lack of financial resources and lack of exchange between in-service and pre-service teacher education institutions. In the next slide, if you are hungry for a long read, you will see the team lit webpage address uh, hosted on the media and learning platform. And while you are there, you can also get acquainted with the other amazing team-led outputs, mainly the lovingly created and curated network, 
as well as the repository of good practices and modules. And with this, and in the name of the whole team, I would like to say thank you for your attention and hope to stay in contact with you. Thank you so much, Lena, Jennifer, and Lucia. We're a little bit tight on time, so if you don't mind, I'm not going to stop for questions just now, but you can all see that in the chat, there's a couple of issues been raised. What age are, uh, what age are different countries now starting their middle education? What is the right age? So we'll probably come back to that. So all comments, thoughts, please into the chat for that. We'll try and come back to the end. And the other question that about film education and journalists going into schools. So maybe if you can follow up everybody in the chat with any links or any thoughts that you have, and hopefully we'll have some time for some discussion towards the end. But I'd like to move on now to the first of our guest speakers this afternoon, and that's Vivian Rangel from Aldita in Spain. And Vivian is going to actually, she has a journalistic background as well, so she crosses this line between teacher and journalist very effectively this afternoon. So Vivian, over to you. Hi, thank you everyone. Uh, can you see my yep. screen? Nice and clear, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, everybody, for the invitation and Lucia for the report and the opportunity of working together and learning a little bit more about media literacy. I'm Vivian Hangel. I'm a media literacy and educational strategy specialist at Malita. And I'm going to tell you today a little bit about how we deal with teacher education and media literacy in Spain. Uh, as some of you may know, Maldita is a non-profit foundation. We are based in Spain and we work building a public trust by fighting disinformation and uh, promoting transparency through journalism, education, technology, research and policy action. Uh, right now, our mission is to uh, provide all the actors that are affected by disinformation from legislators and digital platforms to journalists, citizens, education, educators, sorry, with tools, capacities, and evidence-based content. So everyone can make informed decisions and together we can uh, foster a more resilient, a more accessible and credible media and information ecosystem. Uh, here you can see a, a picture of some of our colleagues in Maldita. So I'm going to start in, to, uh, in 2020. Uh, we all know 2020 was a turning point in many senses. Uh, we had to deal with coronavirus pandemic. And at this time, my colleagues at Maldita were also fighting against uh, the pandemic of misinformation. Everybody was trying uh, to find the credible sources. The teachers are trying to teach using digital tools. Some of them never tried uh, before using digital tools to teach. Um, and of course, we are all trying to survive. Uh, at this time, we also start uh, reading some headlines. I'm sure you're going to remember headlines like media literacy, the other vaccine or headlines like the fake news games uh, can uh, inoculate against the risk of misinformation. And of course, we that work with media literacy know that media literacy is essential to fight misinformation, but it gave us a certain hope. I, I especially felt like we were leaving a turning point uh, and that finally everybody would know uh, that being media literate is fundamental. But the fact is that as the lockdown was over, we uh, went out our houses, we escaped uh, our bubbles, and we arrived at this scenario. <laughs> media literacy what? <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the pre-service teachers. No? Here you can see that the reality is that right now, uh, I have some data from, from 2021, but right now, three years after in Spain, most of the pre-service teachers don't learn subjects related with education technologies, neither with media education. Uh, you can see here current university programs for teachers in early childhood, primary education, master's in teacher. This is a compulsory master, 
for teachers that want to teach secondary education and professional training and language teaching. Uh, all of them uh, reflect an absence of subjects related with media literacy. Um, at Maldita, working with teachers, uh, we discover most of them don't know what is media literacy. Uh, some of them never heard about media literacy. Some of them never um, uh, knew, studied media literacy. And some of them think that media literacy and digital literacy are the same. And it's not because we don't have a tradition. We have a tradition. In Spain, we have at least 50 years of tradition of studying media literacy. We have several academic investigators working with different media literacy concepts. Uh, we have one that's educomunicacion, educomunication that trying to join uh, to, to connect education and uh, communication. We have um, a media literacy, transmedia education. We have lots of traditions. Uh, but outside the uh, universities and outside media stores, um, we can say by our experience that it's not a well-known field of study. Uh, there is also some discussions about how we should call it, as we have so many names to refer uh, to refer to media literacy. Um, I personally understand that media literacy is the outcome of media education, and lately in Maldita we started to use media education instead of media literacy in our in our courses uh, because people understand better and people like better media education. And the one thing we learned is that we never take for granted that teachers know what is media literacy. So we start talking about what is media literacy. Um, here you can see some main legal frameworks. I don't know if you had the opportunity to read the Tinglit report yet, the second one, but it explains uh, very well, briefly, but very well, some of the main legal frameworks that try to increase the presence of media literacy in Spain. Of course, uh, I don't have time to talk about each one. It's not necessary, but as uh, Lucia uh, told us already, we can see some progress since the first one, the, the first meal curriculum, it's the UNESCO one, uh, until right now that we have uh, Ley General de Comunicación Audiovisual and the framework in TEF. Um, initially, uh, meal framework was focused heavily on technology, but it's true that more recently, uh, there has been a shift towards uh, a more complete approach addressing various aspects of uh, media literacy. Just to give you an example, I think it's a, it's a, a, it's easier to understand. If you read, for example, Long Loy, that was uh, the organic law, the, the, recent, the most recent organic law we had, no? that controls how we sh what we should teach in secondary school. If you read the 86 pages of Long Loy, you will never find a reference, a direct reference of media literacy or media education in all the 86 pages. There is not. Uh, of course, we can see some reference of some competences, like uh, the students need to learn how to search for information. The students need to, to uh, develop it, their critical thinking, but there is not a direct reference. If you... Uh, uh, now, right now, cons can can read the Intel framework, um, 2022, for example. Finally, we can see a direct reference. We can read media literacy. Uh, it's a framework for the digital competence of teachers, and one of the competences uh, is specifically media information and data literacy. So we can see uh, there are some progress here. Right now. Uh, I think Lucia already uh, told us something about that, but right now we can face two main problems in Spain. The first one, big difference between Spanish regions. Of course, if you read the 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 the, um, the inform the team lead report, for example, we can see in Catalonia, for example, they have a great media literacy tradition. They work a lot with uh, news studies and 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 film studies. 
it's not the same for all the other regions in Spain, the Spanish regions. Uh, the other challenge we can face here is that media literacy is always a cross subject. I'm not beginning the discussion here if it should be taught as a cross subject or not. Um, I, I think everyone here has an opinion. It's a great way to teach media liter literacy, but the problem is that in Spain, we suffer from, uh, from a lack of culture of transversality or interdisciplinarity. We don't have a lot of works, um, a lot of uh, tradition working with transversality and interdisciplinarity here, as you can see, for example, in England and other countries. So this is a problem because everybody knows, every teacher knows that uh, it should work media literacy during the secondary school, but as it is across subjects, Sometimes you have so much, so much to teach that you don't have time to focus in media literacy. Um, right now we have uh, media literacy in Spain, of course, is a work in progress. Um, we are facing uh, some challenges. I can, I can say that right now, working um, in Maldita, we know that the teachers need um, more solid and structured program training. We are trying to provide them some training. Um, we are trying to provide a new way to teach meal that gives answer to the demands the teachers have. For example, we have to understand all kinds of media. We have to improve critical thinking. This is a part we are working a lot because everybody likes to talk about critical thinking. Everybody knows it's very important critical thinking, but we don't have more tools and resources that help teachers to teach critical thinking. What, what should, we, should we do? How you teach critical things? We, have, we need tools, we need resources. And also we are trying to develop empowered creative ways of learning. And, and we have to be, uh, um, we, have, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are trying to be um, dealing with new subjects. I, I, I know that everybody here is trying to understand how artificial intelligence will change our ecosystem. Uh, we are trying to understand how we can use artificial intelligence to teach. So we're trying to include all these new subjects to our, to our courses and to our resources. And secondary school teachers need more training, more resources to use easily. This is very important. What do you need? We ask the teachers, what do you need? Do you need a PDF? Do you need a presentation? Do you, do you need a game? What do you need to teach better media literacy? Uh, and we're trying uh, to create new, new opportunities also for teachers to get together and to share experiences. We are very lucky because we have the opportunity to talk with the teacher. We, we are doing some focus group to understand what they need, what they want, they want, and uh, finally, primary school teachers uh, here in Spain, we have almost no existing training and resources for primary school teachers. Uh, in Spain, when we talk about primary school, we are talking uh, about uh, children from six until twelve years, specifically uh, doing some research, doing some investigations, we discover that teachers need material to these children um, since eight years until 12 years. You know that here in Spain, almost every children from 10 to 12 years have a mobile, for example, uh, use internet, some of them use social media. So if you, we arrive uh, at secondary school, we arrive late. We need to arrive before, we need to teach media literacy before they arrive to secondary school. Uh, I would like to finish my presentation showing some of the Maldita Educa tools. We already have it. We have a, a, meal, a media literacy resource find, finder in our page. We have a digital escape room that is in English and Italian also, Spanish, English and Italian. So. If you'd like to try it, it's a, well, it's it's a good escape room, I think. <laughs> uh, and we have also other kinds of formations like a micro, micro course in WhatsApp, um, digital tools, digital courses. And right now we are working 
uh, in, in, in one strategy that is training of trainers. We are trying to train more teachers. We are trying to train people that works in libraries, for example. So at this, in this way, we can multiply the knowledge. It's, it's our strategy right now. And we also working in, mat in some material for primary school, because as I, I just told you, we need to arrive before they, they, they arrive to secondary school. We need to try to teach media literacy before. Vivian, so, yes. Thank you. We're just coming to the end of our time. I yes. At the end. And yeah. I'm, I'm finishing. Thank you a lot. <laughs> and lovely talks. <laughs> thank you so much, Vivian. And thank you for the links. In the meantime, Chloe put the link into the chat for everybody. But it's interesting indeed that you, you, you refer to the younger generation and the fact that we're focusing more and more. And as Lena says, the discussion is focusing more indeed on young, younger pupils and younger students. So thank you so much. You'll stay thank with us till the end, I know. We're going to go to France now, to Isabel. Isabel from AFP, Isabel Worth. I am delighted to welcome you, Isabel. So if you could summarize for us the situation in France. Thank you. my screen yes we see your screen fine you're, excellent you're I still will. in preview Maybe. yes i'm the thing is here hold on one second here yep yep perfect so i have written a lot uh <laughs> in my slides but i i will summarize them because uh, already what you have heard uh in the re as a result of the the survey done uh, by I would say my colleagues uh, in a larger way earlier are completely correct and very interesting. Thanks for them. Thank you also uh, all to, for in having invited me to um, uh, explain maybe uh, to you all the status of uh, media literacy and teacher education in France. Uh, to present uh, me, myself uh, a bit, I'm a EFP journalist, so working with a global news agency since more than uh, 20 years, 24 years exactly. And um, I am project manager uh, since more than one year now in uh, some of the Edmo hubs. AFP is part of, you may know already the Edmo hubs. I will tell you more in a minute. Um, I'm also by side uh, call, calling myself <laughs> media literacy activist, uh, volunteering in the association Entre les Lignes. So I will explain you more about the both uh, side of my uh, relationship with media literacy. While working with EFP, I mean, it's not only uh, news agency work, uh, because since a few wars, years, we have launched so many fact-checking, we have developed so many fact-checking uh, activities that now we are considered at the world's largest network of experts, verification journalists. Uh, we are, for instance, uh, doing that in uh, such a standardized and um, ethically uh, way that we, we are also part of the EFCSN, so the European Fact Checking Standards Network uh, founders. And uh, so, for instance, if you uh, want to check our uh, fact checks in your countries. So you could you could find them in the Edmo hubs we are part of. Uh, you see the the in my screen, in the screen, pardon, you see the, the map. And if you, you will get the this presentation, and so there are a lot of links you you could access uh, what I am mentioning. And uh, therefore, uh, in each fact check, uh, we, for instance, for France de facto, in the hub de facto, the fr French fact check done by AFP are, I would say, a piece of media literacy, like our media literacy training, because we show uh, step by step the way we do fact check. So, for instance, uh, providing media literacy tools uh, or um, like, tutorials inside the fact check. Why I am mentioning that it's because a journalist, you will see uh, until the end of my presentation, uh, are a strong 
uh, help or, or uh, player in the media literacy for teachers too, indirectly. Um, we also uh, share our content. AFP shares uh, every year in March uh, the whole content of the produced by the news agency, uh, all the fact checks uh, in 26 uh, languages, by the way, way but uh, but in France, in for for the the present media week at school uh, event, we offer so in French fact checks. The French text wires, so all the the information we produce and uh, photos, videos, graphics, and so so that uh, that goes to the teachers who to schools who can uh, play with that with this content and uh, have uh, create a newspaper or TV shows for their with their students, for instance. So we are really active in the media literacy scene in France, but not only in France. Um, I am. I told you that I am uh, volunteering with the Entre les Lignes uh, Association. So this association, it's exactly reflecting what has been said about France earlier, because uh, this association was uh, funded. Uh, uh, so in uh, 2010 by two journalists and it was not very active and after the attack against uh, Charlie Hebdo, after then uh, the media literacy became really a uh, huge need, we started, you see in the, in the here you see that uh, we, we did provide uh, every year more uh, workshop. So this association provides uh, media literacy workshops in schools and last year we reached the amount of 509 workshops done because we are uh, more than 2000, 200, it would be better 2000, but 200 journalists, active uh, journalists providing this uh, workshop. Um, this association is not only providing workshops in schools, by the way, uh, we did start uh, providing also uh, this workshop in primary schools, because again, like in Spain, like everywhere, I suppose we have uh, seen that the need uh, is to go to the younger audience, but also the need, the reason is to go to general public and to vulnerable publics. So that's why we also go to libraries and to even to prisons. Um, we are uh, certified or uh, have this uh, label to, to, uh, that allow the association to provide uh, in-service uh, trainings, how to uh, provides uh, to do workshops, media literacy workshop. For the moment, we are doing that uh, only for journalists. Um, and last year, we have uh, trained to, uh, more than 200 uh, persons who are now able to teach media literacy. Again, we only are allowed to train journalists for the moment. Um, yeah, our first experiences in primary schools uh, actually were really good and efficient, and we try to promote those actions uh, in our uh, network of schools where we quite regularly go. We cover all France because, as you know, the French system is uh, centralized. Um, there is uh, in the national curricula for French lessons, civic education and history and geography, officially, as said earlier, officially media literacy. Um, <clears throat> in, uh, since uh, the, the assassination of uh, Samuel Paty, the teacher in uh, so th almost four years uh, ago, uh, the govern French government has uh, put more measures, more uh, in the in the agenda for media literacy for teachers, 
So now there are a network, official networks of media literacy advisors, media literacy, more budget for uh, coordinators, and they have published also the general guideline for teachers. Still, still all those actions, uh, what we see is that eventually being a cross subject uh, topic, this creates a kind of contraproductive effect uh, with uh, some of uh, teachers being real experts, becoming real experts in media literacy and some other being completely uh, eventually lost in the field. So, um, for instance, in the French lessons book, uh, I have uh, checked that personally uh, with a French te uh, lesson teacher uh, in the in the second, so in the high, uh, first year of the high school. So at the end of the school uh, program, so to say, the media literacy chapters are covering uh, like, yeah, uh, one one fifth of the program, the full uh, curriculum of the year, which is a lot, which is almost too too much for the this a lot of teachers because they are not uh, really finding uh, so easily material resources and uh, so there is a really good will, but it's just the start of, <laughs> of the actions and there there is a a place for improvement, of course. By luck, the French government, while uh, asking teachers uh, or mandate teachers to teach uh, media literacy, they have organized a bit the things with the creation of the CLIMI, uh, already mentioned, um, which is the main media literacy trainer for the French uh, teachers. A lot of actions have been uh, created. I already said a, a word about AFP involvement, involvement in the like media literacy week or <laughs> press and media week at school. Uh, this is the official name. This is really fine. This is really good, and this uh, this is a highlight in every school. On the other hand, uh, the CLEMI is by luck to delivering a lot of training offers for for teachers and a lot of resources. The thing is, is that uh, the main the main issue is a bit a budget issue because. A lot of teachers don't find the CLEMI offer enough um, and they turn to to ask the either journalists to come to to their classes but the, this is a cost even if the journalists like uh, like I am doing uh, are volunteering the association ask for little participation but it's uh, often too much for the, the, the schools. And also uh, there is uh, by like the, the librarian, the school librarians who are able to help but are really doing that by themselves. And even if they want to, when they want to create a, a newspaper or an exhibition, they find the guidelines online with the CLEMI, but they, there is a, uh, very often an economic uh, topic, an issue, issue. So it's really good. Uh, France, I believe that France uh, is in a very good position in the media literacy uh, actions, but it's still not enough. And because of the country being fully centralized, sometimes on a local field, uh, people are just uh, saying, they're complaining that uh, it's not enough money, it's not enough that and that. And sometimes we see that the, there's, this works only in schools where the te teachers, teachers, librarians, uh, and CLEMI coordinator are really 
strung together and created a network and uh, sharing their actions. So that's why there is, uh, even if uh, Entre les Lignes, and Entre les Lignes is not the only association doing that, Entre les Lignes is quite uh, active. There is still a room for more workshop, more actions, and also I would uh, hope that at some stage, media literacy teaching is also mandatory in the pre-service teachers uh, curricula, because it's not really the case. And uh, for instance, for the French, when you see that a French teacher needs to, to be very uh, so expert, so to say, in media literacy, they are not at all uh, seeing that in the pre-service uh, mm -hmm. uh, studies. So, so this is yeah, a bit um, problematic for some teachers. So that's the global situation. And uh, I wanted to Thanks. thank you again. And yeah, I think thank if you, you well. have more questions about friends in the chat, I will, will thank answer you. them. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, a super overview. It's really interesting. Thank you so much. We get just in one quick question, and that comes from our colleague Tamara, because she said you mentioned that in France there was an agreement to provide to professional training in teaching ML. From who? Who was expected to supply the training? So this uh, professional uh, training I mentioned is uh, for Entre les Lignes. Okay. So Entre les Lignes, it's an association of journalists provide it, yeah. providing uh, workshops in schools. Okay. Um, and uh, recently we have asked, because we have seen that it's not enough. It's They are only drops in the ocean, mm. what we are <laughs> giving. So recently we have, uh, we have uh, so the association uh, has been granted uh, uh, this uh, certification to provide in-service uh, training, media literacy training, but only for the moment, it's only for journalists. Okay. That's my button. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it will be uh, at some stage extended to teachers. That sure. would be wonderful. Sure. OK, thank you very much. And Isabel, you'll stay with us maybe and just check the questions in the chat as well, because we now have one last presentation. Patrick, delighted to welcome you. Um, Patrick has been reflecting on the report on Poland, and he'd like to give us an update from his perspective of what the situation is in Poland. So Patrick from Demagog, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sally, and thank you all for invitation and staying with us. I know that we already have an hour behind, but please stay for another a couple of minutes to uh, discuss a little bit more about Polish context, with, which I find very interesting, not only because I'm in it, but uh, also because we are in a moment of, I would say, even a transition uh, and some hope coming back to uh, the notion of media literacy in Poland, so hopefully it will work out um, eventually and we'll, we'll have some success story uh, to, uh, to, to share uh, in a uh, in, um, couple of months. Um, but I would like to start with uh, some brief uh, introduction and the context of in Poland. Uh, and also, and this is what I would like you to stay with after this webinar, uh, to let you know about some um, obstacles and um, perspectives from the teachers that was given to us in our focus groups uh, that shed, uh, shed a light on how teachers perceive themselves in the context of media literacy. I think it's quite fundamental for understanding the, uh, the point uh, in which we are in Poland with media literacy. Uh, so um, yes, maybe before I start, I would like to acknowledge that uh, I'm the third uh, presenter here coming from the fact-checking envir environment. So I think that we are, with Maldita and AFP, we are all um, members of this the same family or the same network of um, European fact-checking organization. And I think it's quite interesting because it also focuses um, or give that perspective and focus on media literacy from perspective of journalism, uh, journalism and fact-checking, uh, which uh, in result makes uh, the whole thing mostly about uh, news literacy, which is only a part of media literacy, but I think that with the uh, uh, growing uh, risk of disinformation, uh, that's the uh, keyword here currently, 
but we also try to cover some other uh, parts of media literacy and, and collaborate with other organizations to make the um the, the like the the whole perspective um present not only uh, news literacy um i would like to start with some data uh, from media literacy index and i think it shows uh the place um of poland among some um, among other european countries so we are uh, on the second uh, 22nd uh, place uh, out of not 44 but 41 countries uh, uh, take it uh, uh, taken into consideration within this um, uh, index, uh, which is like a medium place, uh, uh, I would say. Uh, we are in the second cluster uh, of countries, but really close to the third cluster. Um, we uh, score really high in the education ranking uh, of uh, PISA uh, exams, which is quite interesting because we we try to focus and um, with our activities in demagogue we focus mostly on uh, providing a media literacy training to teachers and courses and workshops to students but looking at this media literacy index we can realize that the, the problem with media literacy in Poland is mostly in both uh, media freedom uh, that I will go into uh, dive in in a second and uh, the uh, the score in the trust in people and these are uh, these these are those um um indexes that make the general media literacy index for poland not as high as it could be uh if we count only the education ranking uh so media landscape uh is um changing currently so for the past uh, uh for the past uh, couple of years uh, the public broadcasters uh, were in fact the government propaganda tool to spread information or misinformation uh, very often uh, in favor of uh, the former government. Uh, currently it is changing, uh, but only a few days ago uh, we published a uh, report which uh, that was quoted nationally through very different media outlets um, uh, where we checked that uh, during the first month of the reclaim public TV, uh, the uh, journalist standards were not as high as we would expect them to be, unfortunately. So there is still a lot uh, to be done to bring back public media to the public, to the, the, the citizens. Um, and to some extent, it, it still serves the, um, the needs, the goals of the government but not the former one, but the new one um, that used to be uh, the uh, opposition. So uh, that's the, the media landscape, which is quite important, uh, considering that television, maybe not among uh, youth, but among older adults and adults is still uh, one of the main sources or even the main source of information. Uh, and uh, so that's the perspective. So that's the, the the media context. But when it comes to uh, some framework uh, frameworks that are present in Poland, as uh, um, uh, Lucia mentioned before, there is no general framework for media literacy in Poland. Unfortunately, uh, we still and by we I, I mean NGOs, uh, non governmental organizations that uh, work in the field. Uh, we try to explain to um, different ministries the need for introducing such framework. And there is existing framework uh, created by um, civil society organizations a few, a few years ago um, that includes media literacy uh, and in media information literacy, among uh, other um, concepts that very often um, go along. Uh, in Poland, for the past years, we could um, observe uh, focus on digital competencies, um, which uh, like uh, ICTs, information and communication technology, and that was very um, mainstream competency uh, in our educational system. But what we try to do right now is to combine digital education with media ed information edu um, education and show that this should come together in a whole package uh, to provide students with uh, um, competencies they need to navigate in internet, but also to be a um, um, citizens that can fully participate in, uh, in democracy. Um, so that's the framework that we currently lobby to be fully introduced as uh, a part of official educational system, just to show you how um, 
fragmented the, envir the environment is. We already have spoken with the Ministry of Education. This week, we have a meeting with uh, the Ministry of Digitalization, but we are also going to talk to ministries of uh, development, uh, ministry uh, for older adults policies. So there is a plenty of stakeholders that can contribute to supporting media literacy, but at the same time, it's very fragmented and you can see it also in within the um, official curriculum. Okay, so these are some pictures showing our activity within the field. But before I show you some uh, of our initiatives, I would like to also um, focus on teachers for a moment. Uh, so teachers for two years now are encouraged to implement some parts of media literacy through uh, priorities. And these priorities are, these, these are the lists that are um, suggested by the ministry uh, each year. Uh, and these priorities are, uh, these are usually from 10, from eight to 10 point, points that are the, the main priorities from the upcoming school year. And for two years in a row, uh, critical thinking and um, uh, safe navigation in the internet is one of the priorities. Uh, so it's just a general uh, idea, general uh, like a direction for teachers. But in, uh, as a result, many uh, centers for professional development for teachers create some courses, uh, e-learning oppor opportunities to provide this knowledge and new skills to teachers. So this it might seem just a a very small contribution from the ministry, but in fact, uh, it affects uh, the whole environment and how in-service um, in teachers can um, uh, can uh, receive some further further training uh, on media and information literacy. Uh, so, what we lobby for right now is to keep it uh, within these priorities uh, to make it um, more strategical rather than uh, um, just you know uh, one moment thing. Uh, within the curriculum. Um, so that's the perspective from the ministry, but then it, uh, when, the, when these priorities go to schools, we also have to acknowledge the perspective of teachers, which is very complicated. Um, when we spoke to teachers last year uh, during a um, quantitative research with a focus group, we've learned that for many teachers, um, this information uh, is a topic which is perceived by them as something that they can emotionally relate to. Because back in 2019, teachers were addressed by the former government with a misinformation campaign about themselves. So uh, for, for many, uh, trying to deal with um, disinformation as a problem, as a concept, is to some extent dealing with their own uh, trauma. Uh, which also affected the way, the way they perceive the, 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 the problem of um, disinformation. Uh, teachers very often do not consider themselves experts. They are very afraid that they might be uh, perceived by students as people that know less uh, than students. Uh, so they'd rather have uh, inviting us to schools, uh, fact checkers, journalists to provide um, this uh, media literacy courses um, instead of them, but we try to encourage them to stop thinking uh, from the perspective of the authority uh, that has to give uh, right answers, but rather encourage them to, uh, to ask uh, right questions. Uh, teachers very often um, uh, claim that they cannot work with materials we provide to them because they uh, have to um, deal with overloaded curricula, and then very often, uh, often they uh, they say that they lack of time to uh, to focus on some other um, uh, some other concepts that are not obligatory within the curriculum. Um, and also for some uh, for some teachers and and headmasters, uh, the the so called Lex Charnik that was the, um, the 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 project of a, a bill which was which was introduced by the former minister of education. Um, that was uh, restraining uh, non-governmental organizations from entering schools to provide any kind of education, mostly sexual education, but to some extent also media and literacy education. And it has chilling effect. So even though it wasn't fully implemented at any stage, uh, we had some um, uh, calls from uh, headmasters, teachers saying that they would rather not inviting us at, for the time being because they are afraid that that might have some uh, real consequences 
personal consequences to their their careers. Um, and they also very often say that uh, it, uh, the topic of misinformation might be also perceived as something political uh, or even um, like uh, yeah, political, too controversial to, uh, to um, discuss at school. Uh, so these are perspectives of teachers, but luckily there are some that, that there are many of them that want to contribute and want to learn about media and information literacy. And for them, we created a lot of uh, different materials, resources. Uh, we provide training to teachers under this uh, motto of uh, helping hand uh, in uh, fighting misinformation. Uh, we pro we have quite standardized. Uh, module uh, training um, approach and we have four uh, main topics and these are fake news and other types of um, misinformation how to verify uh, sources online how to use fact checking tools and how to react in a conversation uh, in the internet or directly uh, when there are some falsehoods being shared uh, we created um uh, up till now four different e-learning courses and we are still developing new ones mm -hmm. with also with experts uh we create and still keep updating uh, lesson plans for teachers both in secondary education but but also for the last grades in primary schools uh because we share this idea that media and, uh, information literacy should start as soon as possible um, and that's maybe the, the, the last slide that I, I would like to share with you, showing some resources that are the answer for some requests from teachers who very often say that they uh, need some very simple resources for 5, 10, 15 minutes that they could easily implement um, while uh, implementing while, uh, mm, mm, yeah, while, while implementing the, the national curriculum. So to, to make it as uh, suitable for lessons that they have to uh, conduct anyways, and also um, uh, related to the topics that are brought up during the lesson. So here you have um, uh, five different publications for different subjects from geography and biology through history and civic education to uh, Polish and English languages. Uh, so maybe uh, I think I, I, I can stop here uh, regarding the time. There are some other resources that we created. Um, so maybe what's worth mentioning also is that we try to collaborate with many parties, uh, including um, a twinning program and some other NGOs that try that provide training for teachers uh, who realized in the recent years that this disinformation was, is one of the most crucial topics, uh, very often climate misinformation, that's so specifically, uh, and we try to provide uh, training to teachers through uh, these networks of um, NGOs as well. Patrick. Yes. That's it from my side. I know we are running out of time. Thank you so much for, uh, for the attention and being here. Super, thank you very much, Patrick. We really wanted to make sure that we had this contrast between the research that was carried out by the team. And then it's been so nice to have the three of you join us this afternoon to give us a kind of a reflection on what the reality is. Not that the research isn't reflecting reality as well. Any last questions? I'm just looking at the um, at the chat. Anybody got anything they'd like to put to any of our speakers? I think that's probably as much as we have time for this afternoon. I'm sorry it was such a mad dash today, but we hope that you've enjoyed it. And we will obviously have the recording available afterwards. Our team are now moving on to the third and final part of the research work that's being carried out. So we're looking forward to hearing what comes from that. Um, and I'd also just like to remind you about a couple of webinars that are coming up shortly. So um, following on from this one on the 20th of March, we have another Wednesday webinar on teacher education. That time we're going to focus much more on the networking activities of the Team Lit project. 24th of April, the final one in our Wednesday webinar series of Team Lit, where we will focus much more on the resources. And then we hope we'll be able to show you our new modules as well emerging from the project. Um, 22nd of May, we will have a webinar specifically on promoting male and youth citizen journalism through mobile stories, which we're running in collaboration with the project we're partners with called PROMS. And of course, stay tuned, follow media learning events, sign up to our newsletter, tell us what you're up to, 
We really would like to hear from you. Thank you all very, very much this afternoon. And thanks to the team for all the time and patience and actually managing to, to get through this in such a short period of time. Thanks, Chloe, for all your help as always. And uh, it's been really nice being with you this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed our session today. Thank you very much. Thank you.